Hey guys, welcome back. It is the last week of the rugby championship. Los Pumas versus Wallabies. There is a little bit of drama again off of the field. A bunch of the Pumas players, they aren't going to be playing in this game due to breaching COVID travel laws in Australia. Uh, there's also only going to be 75% of fans on the st or in the stadium uh, because I think the, the COVID numbers have went up in Australia as well. You can clarify a little bit there if I'm not completely correct. When we do look at the two teams, the Pumas, they do get hit a little bit by that six players that aren't there, especially two big names that I will mention. The Wallabies, they bring in a couple of changes as well. The most big, the biggest changes are probably on the bench. We'll get to that as well. When we get to the front row of the Pumas, they bring in Martinez, who was on debut last week on number one. So we'll see how he goes up against the Tongan Thor Tupo, who's been brilliant this year at scrumming and over the park as well. The other prop, Medrano, he was one of the players who was uh, breach, in breach of that rules as well. So he's out Perieto. He comes in at number three. I think Medrano is probably the best uh, tight head at the moment. So that might be a bit of a problem for them as well. Montoya, he continues at number two, the captain. Uh, he needs to lead from the front in this one if they want to get a win. Uh, Slipper, he's at number one. Like I said, Tupo at number three. That is a strong propping combination along with Falau Fahingo, who's also back to the form we've known him for. I said when he got into the Wallabies team, he's set up again. He's probably not where he was a couple of years ago, but he looks like he is there again. Isaac Rodder at number four. He's at good form when it comes to line out time as well. Uh, Darcy Swain, he works his way back into the team along with Samu, both of them. They've been brilliant off of the bench, especially Samu. So they work their way back. They want to deserve or show why they deserve to start again. Guido Petty, probably the best lock that the Pumas do have. They, he starts at number four, along with Lavanini. Lavanini always plays well if he manages to stay on the park for the whole game. Uh, if he doesn't get a card or something like that. He is also a very big threat as well for the team. Getting to the loose forwards where the Pumas are also hit. Uh, the former captain, Matera, he's one of the players who breached the rules as well. So he's out. But luckily for them, Bruni comes back at the right time. Bruni, like I've said before, he's probably their best loose forward at the moment. And that is really saying something because the Los Pumas have brilliant and talented loose forwards. Uh, when you look at guys like Crema as well and Matera. So Bruni... Big guy for them to bring in. He is such a big carrier of the ball. Uh, Marcos Kramer, like I said, he's at number seven. He also was big last week. He was just a little bit indisciplined, especially playing guys off of the ball or playing guys late. That cost the uh, Los Pumas so many uh, va valuable times over the game as well. Gonzalez, he continues at number six. Still very new to the team as well. Like I said, for the loose forwards, Samu, he came in for the Wallabies. I haven't seen him play much at six. He's preferred position as number eight but he's continuing at number six Valentini at number eight for the Wallabies joined by Michael Hooper we know what he brings he always is so dangerous on the park um, especially at breakdown time and he is just a hard bloke on the park as well Nick White at number nine against Bertrandau that was a big battle as well last week Quade Cooper against Carreras Cooper he's been brilliant as well this year he wants to show why he has to start now that Jock James O'Connor is back, Cooper, he was brought in especially for this series. So it's good for him to kind of still start with Jock also being back now. Carreras, he's standing in still at number 10. Uh, like I said, he is not a number 10. He's a fullback slash wing. His last three or two or three games, he's been playing number 10. And he's doing a good job actually at it, if I have to say it. He's uh, really finding space for the guys out wide still, but he does make... A couple of rookie mistakes on his position as well. Samu Kurevi, he's my nomination for player of the tournament because he's just busting everyone in front of him. Um, it's so difficult to bring that guy down. He's joined by Iketau. Um, I think he's probably not been that good. Um, he's good, but he's being very overshadowed, sh overshadowed by Kurevi. So you can't always see Iketau uh, as you do with the Brumbies. Chocobares, he's at number 12. Sinti at number 13. Like I say every week, that young combo in the centers, they are growing. Sinti especially looks like he has a big future ahead of him. He's a tall fellow at, as well at number 13. He just 
takes the ball up every time and he's a difficult guy to bring down. I like to look at him like almost like Damien de Allende in South Africa. The Wallabies change a couple of things out wide with uh, Kuriam Betty. He's not there this week. He went uh, home to see his family a bit. Callaway, he switches from 14 to 11. Uh, I don't know why they would do that because Callaway has been very dangerous on no number 14. Um, I mean, he scored five in the last six starts for the, the Wallabies. Um, but Kellaway might be good at 11 as well. We'll see. Pattaya, we haven't seen him at 11 though. So number 14 is probably where Pattaya prefers to play. He's a youngster who we know is very dangerous on the park. He, if he gets that arms free and gets the ball to the players next to him, it usually does lead to tries. Moroni, he comes in at number 14 for Las Pumas. And then Buffelli, he's at number 11 as well. Like I say, he's a fullback playing at the wing. I don't think he's actually a winger, in my opinion. Malia at number 15. He's prone to an error here and there at number 15, not being in position. And then Reese Hodge with his massive boot at the fullback for the Wallabies. Lenorgan, he comes in at number 16 for the Wallabies. Angus Bell continues at number 17. And then Greg Holmes, he's going to be the oldest Wallaby playing uh, since World War II. He's 38 years old, so um, great to have him back in that setup. I think he has 27 caps to his name. Two guys we don't see much. Uh, well, Gallo is his debut, but Bello, I haven't seen him play for the team either. So the Los Pumas really have a tough task when it comes to scrum time, I think, yeah, especially in that second half. The Even the guys starting, I don't really think, can have the upper hand over the Wallabies. Alomano at number 19, he's been in good form up against Matt Phillip. And McMahon, good to have him back in the Wallabies setup as well. Very dangerous, seven star as well for Australia. So if he gets the ball, he can run over guys, around guys, and he's very quick. Uh, Garrison, he's at number 20. Garcia, who made his debut a couple of weeks ago at number 21. Gordon, almost forgot the guy existed because he hasn't played much for the Wallabies of late. He comes in at number 21, joined by James O'Connor, who is still working his way back from injury. Tom Wright is also included. So what you can see from that Wallabies bench, there's a lot of guys included that has been with the, the camp, but they haven't been playing much. Domingo Miotti, he's on number 22 as the fly-off replacement. And then Carreras, he made his debut last week. Guys, getting into the prediction of this one. You can see it's partly cloudy for this one. It is 25 degrees Celsius, so not too hot for this one. I do think the Wallabies will make it four in a row. Wallabies to win this one, let's say, by 12 points. Let me know your prediction down in the comments below. Also, check out these videos next to me. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more international content. And then I'll see you for the next one. Cheers.